recording. Hi guys, good evening. This is Dr. Jenny Yusuf, physical therapist and doctor of physical therapy, geriatric clinical specialist, and also the creator and founder of Bands and Paul Support Group. It's an amazing Thursday again. Thanks God, it's Thursday. Every Thursday, we have amazing therapists. They can be occupational therapists, physical therapists, academicians, and entrepreneurs. We have lots of innovators as well that we interviewed. But tonight, we will have another entrepreneur, PT entrepreneur, we call it, rehab entrepreneur. He always have lots of insights, innovations, of course, maybe with experience. That's why we would like to get into his brain, you know? He always has some great ideas. It's none other than Anthony Maritato. He call him Tony, and we will learn more about him. He is a physical therapist and owner of multiple outpatient clinics prior, and also he's an educator and creator of different courses that helps us lots of clinicians. Without further ado, welcome, Tony. How are Hi. you? Hi, Jenny. Thanks so much for having me and everybody here who's going to be watching this. Thank you for having me. Yes, you're welcome. So, Tony, can you tell us more about your transition? I know you are a physical therapist, and now you are an educator and a creator of different courses. You even teach us in your group how to be very good in social media, use the social media as a platform. But before that, who is Tony before and how did you come up with these great ideas? Yeah, so I, I originally started down in Sarasota, Florida. I live in Ohio now. Um, you know, before I became a licensed physical therapist, I was a private practice owner. And the story I always share was I grew up down on Siesta Key, right by the beach. I had a very, you know, wonderful childhood, but I was always that kid that loved business. I would always find businesses as a child, at seven, eight years old. I think I get it from my mom. My mom came to this country from South America. She was born in Colombia, South America. And when she came here, the first thing she did was start a business. And so it's just in my roots and my heritage. So um, I graduated high school actually back in 1993. And I remember, you know, I didn't want to get a job. I didn't want to start working. I wanted to start a business. And so I took over a, a plant store, a landscaping plant business, learned how to, how to run and operate it, grow it. And then when I decided it was time to go to school, I went, I got my undergraduate from Penn State University, got an undergrad in kinesiology. And then um, I was working at a local hospital in Sarasota and I was working as a rehab aid, a tech. And I talked to the therapist there and I was like, how do I do this? How do I start my own physical therapy clinic? I want to do this. And the advice at that time was, well, first you have to become a physical therapist. Then you have to start working and building relationships and, you know, get to know the doctors. And then maybe 10 years down the road, you open your own practice. And I thought, I can't wait. I'm not going to wait. I can't wait. So literally within a year, I, I quit my job. I leased 800 square feet right next to the beach. And I started a personal training studio within six months of starting that I recruited a physical therapist that I knew from the hospital. She owned the physical therapy clinic, that physical therapy clinic rented space in my personal training studio. Now she's my wife and we have four beautiful boys and we grew that business to um, five clinic locations, three in Florida, two in Ohio. We had a full team of clinical staff. We brought in our billing in-house. We did all of our admin, our marketing. Um, and, and really, that's where we learned all of the lessons, you know, of how to run a business, how to step out of the clinician role and really develop a business that doesn't depend on you, the owner, for everything that, you know, our mission, our goal from the beginning, my wife and I was, we said, we know we could deliver better care than we could at the hospital. She's a physical therapist also. We knew that we could see fewer patients and make more money, but most importantly, we knew we were gonna get married and we wanted the time freedom to be with our kids. And so even today, she's been out of the clinic, out of patient care for 14 years. 
I, that's how old our oldest son is. I've been in the clinic, mostly mornings, three mornings a week. Um, but I'm home. I put the kids, you know, we take the kids to school every morning. I make their lunch every morning. I'm home before they get out of school every afternoon. I can coach. I can do all the things that I want to do as a dad, because we built a business that is self-sufficient. I can still treat, I can still work, but I don't have to. And so any of those lessons, I mean, they were hard fought lessons to learn. We, we made a lot of mistakes just like everybody else, but I'm happy to share anything I have. That's nice. That's a great journey. So all in all, let's say, how do you think how many years you can say that it's not really a question because people are really different, you know, the, the journey, but when you see that progress that you can really um, do it on your own. And I really wanted to do this as an entrepreneur. How old are you when it starts to you that I can do this? You know, the especially, is it 40s? Is it 50s? Or it, it varies. I agree. You could do it at any stage. So I, you know, I always say like, you can't copy what I did because I started the business in my 20s. I didn't have kids. I didn't have a family. I didn't have a mortgage. Um, and even when I went to PT school, when I went to PT school in South Florida, this would have been 2003 to 2005. It was dirt cheap. I, I always share this story. So I went down there. I got into a couple programs. I chose the fastest program that would take me from, you know, my bachelor's to my master's degree. And what actually happened was we purchased a condo, two bedroom condo a half a mile off campus, basically a block off campus. Um, I rented one room in the condo to another PT student that was in my class. That rent paid the mortgage for the condo. We sold the condo when I graduated. The profit from the condo paid the full cost of my education. So I really went to school for free and we already had a physical therapy practice with two locations going and a third one as soon as I graduated. Um, so it's really challenging to compare, but what I will say, and I think your audience will appreciate, you know, it depends on understanding what it is that you want. There are going to be viewers that they've been working for 20 years already. They know they're good clinicians. They know that patients want to work with them, um, but they don't necessarily have the confidence to step out on their own. They're not totally sure on what they want to do. And they pretty much know that they don't want to grow a $10 million business. They want to deliver the kind of patient care that they want to deliver. They want to make the same or more money than they were making, but working the way that they want to work. And something like that, truthfully, can be done at any time. You know, and, and the simple math behind it, whether you do cash pay only or Medicare or a combination of the two, I mean, if a therapist is averaging $100 a visit, 20 visits a week, that could be seven patients, that could be 10 patients, um, but 20 visits a week, 52 weeks a year, two weeks vacation, that's $100,000 a year, you know, and then that's usually more money than they're making, working less hours than they're making for an employer. So something like that could be done anytime. When I see somebody go the bigger business route, like we went multiple locations, we had admin staff, we had clinical staff. Um, the time frame that I see for somebody doing that successfully is usually the first three years. It's all about reinvesting. It's about every, every penny of profit you have, you put back into the business, you hire more staff, you grow the business, you put it into marketing, you build your relationships. Um, it was honestly probably three years before we started to feel comfortable. We started to pull profits out of the business to, you know, support us and put money into our bank accounts. By five years, we were pretty stable. All of our physicians knew us, loved us. They referred to us. Um, we had a good system of operation. Every problem in the company wasn't coming to me. We had organizational kind of structure to the business. So if some uh, toilet was clogged, there was a procedure to take care of that. Uh, somebody answered the phone. There was a procedure for that. So I, I would say a one person operation, you can get up and running six months to a year, you're profitable and doing better than you did as an employee. Yeah. A bigger business, you're looking more in the line of three years probably before you really feel confident in the success of that big business. 
That's that's amazing. That's a good. R, that's what you said. The ROI will be like yeah. three years. Three years because it's a big bug. And I think you need more partners or more funds for that, you know, because it's a big project. But as I can said, tell you that most of the people, you know, and, and my advice has changed over the years. I mean, I've been in this since 2001. We started mm -hmm. the business in 2001, 2002, it turned into a physical therapy clinic. So this is over 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, we started with nothing. I literally, I had saved $10,000 from working at the hospital. Um, I borrowed 20,000 from my mom. And with $30,000, I signed a lease. It was a three-year commitment, 800 square feet. Uh, I purchased some equipment um, and, and I hung a sign, you know, and, and that was really what, what I got started with. But the idea is, Today, if I fast forward to today, there's so much technology. There's so much access to amazing information. And, and really what, what I would be looking at today, like what's unique about my story is I was not a physical therapist. So I could not mm -hmm. deliver physical therapy services, even though I technically own the physical therapy business. That's a double-edged sword because so many therapists are good at what they do. They want to do what they do, but they're so good at it. Then what, when they start, they can never get out and they can never have the time that they want because every patient wants to work with them. They build their reputation. They build their, their caseload. And then all of a sudden there's a wait list and they don't have freedom. And they went into this because they love what they do, but they also <laughs> want to be with family and friends and enjoy the, the rewards um, so what I would tell somebody today is I would never quit my job until the business was already up and successful. If I was working in a skilled nursing or working home health or doing something else that was paying the bills, I would keep that and build my business on the side because I would want to build a business that is not dependent on me as the owner to deliver all of the patient care services. It's hard. I'm not going to pretend that it's not hard to do, but what I will say is that if you can do it, it's almost like a testing ground. Then when you do quit your job, now you can treat patients because you love to treat patients, not because you have to do it to afford your mortgage, you know? And, and so um, I would say, especially with the, the uh, increased popularity of mobile therapy, not having a brick and mortar clinic with the increased popularity of telehealth and virtual consultations, you know, there are a lot of things that you can do after your normal clinical job on the weekends, on holidays, that really would allow you to get started completely for free. Wow. You answered my next question. You already gave us tips, you know, especially for this clinicians out there that's thinking to have a business, what are your tips and what they need to look forward? So you gave us already some of the ideas. Um, don't leave your current job, but do a side hustle. And in your in your Facebook group, you always tell us the different side hustles, different techniques. So um, tell us more about the zero to paid. It is um, Medicare you're helping us from A to Z, you know, sure. from zero. That's why you said zero. And then now you have a business of your own. It's a more on the bed. Can you tell us more about that, Tony, please? Yeah. And, and this would be a great example for somebody, you know, so like I've been a therapist, but I've been a business owner for 20 years. I've been a therapist for probably 15 years. Um, but even I could always kind of see the writing on the wall. I could see the profession changing. I could see challenges coming. And so I said, I cannot ever be in a position where I'm completely dependent on patient care for my revenue, right? It's just like if a patient, I, I evaluate a patient and the patient has a goal. I want that patient to meet that goal, but I also want that patient to have excess capacity so that if they want to walk 50 feet, I want them to be able to walk 150 feet and have a walker and a cane available in case they need it. So when you look at my background, and I always say, just reverse engineer the stuff that you see successful people doing. So I've got a successful clinic. We've got two clinic locations. I've got a team in place. But I also said, what do I have of real value that would help other people? And I said, well, you know, I took my billing in-house in 2005. I had 
billing companies before that, they were all pretty terrible. I think we have a really great billing operation. Nobody in the space is, is educating other therapists about that. Everything from getting initially contracted with Medicare, it's so confusing and daunting until you have somebody who can explain it to you and you understand it. Um, through how you create a Medicare claim, how you submit the claim, how you post payments, so many of these things. And I see so many posts on Facebook where even when people are getting paid, that doesn't mean they understand the process. And so they're still in the dark. And we're all, I, I know the brain of a therapist, because I have one, we're all so, so nervous about doing something wrong that we overcompensate and we do 10 times too much. And so when I do clinical chart reviews and I look at what therapists are documenting and I see pages and pages and pages of documentation and I say, look, this is wonderful, but that's not what Medicare is paying you to do. And the one component that you are required to do isn't done. Let's just say a signature or certification on a plan of care. You didn't get it within 30 days. So even though you did an amazing job with your patient, even though you have pages of documentation, the fact that you didn't do one of the actual requirements because you didn't know, none of the rest of that stuff matters. And technically you wouldn't be paid for any of this. You know, and so what I did was I said, okay, I've got 20 years of experience. I think I can explain it pretty well. I think I bring a different perspective to Medicare and billing than the other experts that are out there. I'm certainly no expert, but I can share my experiences. And so I created a course. And I said, well, if I wanted that course, what would I want? So I said, well, I don't want to just watch videos. So I teach the course live every month. We do nine one hour sessions. I do it in the evening because I know a lot of people are working or have kids and family just like me. So my kids are asleep by 9 p.m. Eastern. So I teach Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern for one hour. It's a nine hour program. And every month I do a new live cohort. And, and the reason there's, there's so much value in that is because I get to see the mistakes that the other therapists have made. I get to see where I didn't teach something well, and so I can teach it better the next time. I can include updates and changes that Medicare is producing. But for you guys, all of you watching, like you, Jenny, you know, you have so much experience, knowledge, background, even from, you know, being bilingual and being able to communicate like you putting together a program that taps into that knowledge and experience for other clinicians that want to do what you did and, and for clinicians that have special skills and talents and, you know, pelvic floor or geriatric or Parkinson, um, there isn't a single therapist out there who doesn't have some sort of specialized knowledge or some special gift that wouldn't benefit other therapists from learning. All you guys need to do is package it and make it available. You know, e even somebody out there is an amazing person at documentation. Show us how you document. We will pay you because even if you save us five minutes a day over the lifetime of a career, you saved us hours and hours and hours of documentation and probably thousands of dollars. Every single person has a skill to sell. So you have your patient care but then you should also be accessing that extra knowledge. And it's really, again, with technology, you can start a Thinkific account totally free. You can upload your videos totally for free. You can sell the course and make a profit before you ever have to pay anything. Um, it, people just don't know how easy it can be. Oh my God. It's only like 20 minutes, um, Tony, and you're already give us lots of nuggets how to be... <laughs> a great clinician not really treating the client but become an innovator in different technologies available you you have also a course in udemy in doing the those treat, uh, courses and i took that as well how you said already that thinkific get those thinkific courses do this and do that now the zero to paid courses is like you will assist us teach us the do's and don'ts and how to begin because we're really from the scratch and we will graduate that we will have our own tel uh, mobile therapy or, you know, those things. But when they're fear and they don't really know what to do, is it cash based? And then the different challenges that we have regarding the reimbursement of the Medicare, what's your 
tips to us or what you can say just do it or just go with the flow or think first follow your passion things like that is it cash based or i'll do medicare so you know everybody's going to have a different perspective and we all have our own biases and what's important to us um whenever we talk about cash based services a lot of you know you get two sides of the spectrum a lot of therapists say well i don't want to just help the population that can afford $250, $300 a session. I also want to help the other end of the, the spectrum. Um, so I always try to say, you know, obviously reimbursement, payment is important, whatever the payment method, whether it's an insurance company or the patient, um, the better you understand what it is that you can uniquely deliver, you know, for me. So I've kind of created this niche completely by accident as a specialist in total knee replacement. So I created a YouTube channel. Um, it was originally a YouTube channel for my business. It was Total Therapy Solutions YouTube channel. But then what I realized was I enjoy treating patients who have had a total knee replacement. I believe that I bring a unique perspective to those patients. Just today in the clinic, I had a patient drive several hours to come see me because she was getting therapy. She wasn't happy with the therapist. She saw my YouTube videos, found out that I was a couple hours away. She jumped in a car. She came out to see me. And so it's one of those things where um, as we understand better what it is that we want to do and, and what we can deliver, then we can build the business model around it. And so what I try to explain to patients is, if you ask in my group, I've got about almost 6,000 people in my Medicare billing for mostly cash-based PTO, TSLP group. Every time I ask the question, how is it working with Medicare? Everybody who's worked with Medicare longer than a year unanimously says they're the easiest payer, they're the most consistent payer, they're the most you know open, they'll answer your questions, they, they never have problems with Medicare. The other third-party payers, it gets to be a little more complicated, but Medicare is absolutely the easiest. And what's nice is with Medicare, anybody watching this, you can go to the Medicare physician fee schedule. You can look up your state. You can put it put in the CPT codes that you typically bill, and you can see what the reimbursement would be. I can tell you on average across the country, an evaluation for PT or OT, somewhere around $130 after all of the reductions are done. Um, a four unit visit, PT or OT, somewhere around $95 to 110 after all of the reductions. If somebody, now that is good for mobile therapy in the home, that is also good for brick and mortar in the clinic. Um, if somebody's going to charge self pay rates, cash pay services, you know, usually I always advise 200 to 250 or more. But it's a different business model. It's a different population. People are, you know, expecting different things. I personally, we accept all insurances in my practice because my philosophy is I'm not dependent on my, my patient care for income. I've got multiple streams of income. So I want access for everybody and I want to make it affordable for everybody. I want to make it as, as easy and inexpensive as possible. But I always say, I'm not delivering a high value specialty service. I'm not um, OCS certified. I don't have any advanced education. Like I'm a therapist and I take what I do seriously, but most of my patients are very simple. They're not medically complex. There's no neurologic involvement. They're already driving and living independently. They're managing their finance. They're doing everything. They're dressing, bathing, feeding themselves. They're probably golfing and playing tennis on the side. They're coming to my clinic for very simple stuff. And so I don't need the depth of knowledge that most of your viewers are going to need. But if I did, I promise you, I would be doing a combination. I would be doing self-pay services in conjunction with Medicare. And the example I give, I know a therapist, wonderful woman. She specializes in treating patients with Parkinson's and balance disorders. So this is a very, you know, involved, uh, complicated um, patient population. When she does an initial evaluation, Medicare pays for that. But then when she develops her plan of care, there are things that she recommends that are not covered services under the Medicare benefit policy manual. So it's not unusual that she would say this, this plan of care, 
it's going to be, and I'm just making this up now, but it's going to be 12 visits. The total cost of the plan of care is going to be $4,875. Great news. Medicare is going to pay about 1,238 of those dollars and you'll be responsible for the rest. If you don't want the other services that Medicare doesn't cover, no problem. We can only do the Medicare covered services, but I recommend that you do these other services because the reality is you're not going to achieve the outcome that you could if you only do what Medicare pays for. You know, and, and most patients understand Medicare can't pay for everything. If, if they could, like they would get better food, they would have a nicer bed, they would get new shoes. Like that stuff is important, but Medicare is not going to cover it. You know, and so the, the practice of the future puts the power in the clinician's hands. You're the expert, you're, you're the highest level, you're the one that sees the whole picture. So when I do evaluations, a lot of times I talk about sleep hygiene, I talk about nutrition on a broad basis. Those are non-covered services. So if the patient wants me to work with them on those things, they will pay out of pocket for those services. Medicare will put, cover the cost of the therapeutic exercise and the therapeutic activity. But the other stuff is, you know, the stuff that I think is probably going to be more powerful. Um, so, so that's what I would advise anyone is, Yes, you can go just the conventional route. You can do what everybody else has always done for the last 20 years, but you're probably going to get the same results that other private practice owners have gotten. You're going to get frustrated. You're not going to make enough money and you're barely going to survive. Or you can bring in the combination of saying, I'm going to let Medicare pay for what Medicare covers, but I'm going to offer cash pay for the services that I believe are important, but not covered. That's really a golden tip there. Yes, it's a combination, you know. It's and also you can add even the telehealth on top of that because right? Because especially nowadays, mileage and everything, and then it adds up. And then also the co different courses that you're suggesting to us before, doing some videos, use the different social media. YouTube, you're really teaching us. So this is really amazing, Tony. This is only like 20 to 30 minutes. I already have an idea. Oh, that's why. Because I'm really thinking like it's really difficult because I am geriatrics and my client should be using their Medicare. How can I just purely do a cash base? But right. I want a cash base because of these things, maybe because I'm I'm feared with this Medicare always like there's a pay cuts you know that's always their hindrance in general but this gives us a great clarification that it's possible just go there and of course we need a great mentor which is like Tony he experience wise and I agree it's not certifications it's not like the title itself it's really your experience Tony don't say that oh I'm not a physical therapist like experience like specialized you are we're looking at you you have 6,000 members in your Medicare billing and we learned a lot there are many small heads they're always watching your <laughs> knowledge and post and I'm one of them Tony and we are really appreciate you that's why I want to tell other um all our listeners our clinicians we would like to learn more about you and I heard that you have a great um event coming up with Mike Chua and then um other oh what's her name Kara yeah, it's um, going to be Kara, it's going to be Sue, Mike, Sue. Steve from Hello Steve. Note. Yep, yeah. Hello Note. And then so, I so think all of you. This is really Let's exciting. Travel. And it's especially exciting because um, the event's going to be back in my hometown. So it's going to be in mm -hmm. on Siesta Key, which is a beautiful vacation destination, white beach, white beaches. And um, so we're going to be there November 12th to the 16th. Uh, mm -hmm. We arranged an Airbnb and, and there's going to be all of us are going to do breakout sessions and, and educate. And more than anything, what I what I try to explain is that it, it's about the community and the connections you make. You know, I know I was not a physical therapist when I came into the world of physical therapy and talking to other physical therapists, sharing ideas. Um, they always tend to reject those ideas. And I know friends and family, they, they love you, they care about you. But when you, the watcher here, 
say, hey, I want to go open my own practice. There is going to be a line of people that tell you, no, you can't do it. Don't risk it. Keep your job. Keep your benefits. All of these things. And they do it out of love. They do it because they care. But when you get around other people that have done it, that have done it at different levels, that have been successful in different ways, it really does open your mind. You know, just like our patients, when our patients are in a skilled nursing and everyone around them is sick, but then they get out in the community and they're, they're living independently and they feel so much better simply because the people around them are doing so much more. That, that's kind of what I see. So what this event, this November 2022, um, what it really is about is about showing and sharing those experiences that we can't totally share through social media. But when we're together for two, three days in a row and we get to know each other and we build trust and rapport and you know, I'm an open book. I mean, I'll tell everybody my mistakes so you don't have to live through them. Um, and I'm more than happy to, to say, look, this, this is real. This is what I do. Like I can legitimately have two fully functional operational clinics and I'm not there. I can go when I want, but I don't have to go, you know? And so, yeah, November 12th to the 16th, Sarasota, Siesta Key, it'll be a great time. And I think there's still like seven seats left. I think they cap it at 30. So I think there's seven mm. left. Okay, there's a limit. So so where is it? Like it's an Airbnb, so it's like a place or it's a hotel that they will um be so the the people who come, the attendees will stay in a hotel, but oh. the actual event will be in this Airbnb right on the beach that has like a, a big room for the presentation and then smaller areas for the breakout sessions. Yes. All right. That's really nice. And then they have like a QA portion always right. like getting to know what works and what's not and things like that. So this is right. really a coaching program for yeah. two to three days. That's amazing. So 30. So at least you have time for all these people because definitely you want to begin from what works for them. And because it's not really everybody's different you know this might work for you and this is the question of this clinician thank you so much tony and this is really inspiring and i'm so happy that we're able to make it today and also lots of knowledge only by just listening to you for 30 minutes and i'm sure all our listeners will also um really enjoying it right now so guys if you are looking forward to learn more um one would like to step up and have your own mobile pt and then use the medicare check out the zero to paid medicare course of tony if you want more on to try and you're still don't know how to do the courses via video so check out the different courses the thinkific he has udemy you know many resources there so tony please give us all those links and then I will also add it. And how can we connect with you? I think the best way to reach me is just through Facebook. Look for me as Anthony Maritato on Facebook. I do my best to answer all of my messages and I'm on there every day. And of course, my, my main group, Medicare Billing for mostly cash-based PTOTSLP. But I'll send you all the links and I'm happy to help any way that I can. Thank you so much. We are blessed to know you, Tony. Thank you for helping us clinicians. We're really looking forward to be entrepreneur like you. We want to help others. We also have our balanced life, you know, with our family and with the difficulties having right now with um, financially and everything. They really need to have a different eggs and different nest, something like that, right? Yeah. Not only they're full time, they should always have this out different platforms, different income, and different uh, side hustles, as we said. And you then, got it, thank Jenny. you. Thank, thank you. you so much. You're very instrumental to each and every one. Of, you just don't know, right? And you will just surprise that they will just message you in the group. So, so guys, last message from Tony. So we have November. This is the event with the other amazing therapists. We will post all the links there. Medicare Building is a Facebook group and his courses and different resources. So thank you so much again, guys. It's amazing. Thanks, God. It's Thursday again with a great innovator, entrepreneur, a physical therapist, academician, and we highlight it today. Mr. Tony Maritato. God bless, guys, and God bless, Tony. More blessings. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day.
time, guys. Bye.